Dolphins straddle two very different worlds. They're not the strongest flyers above the waves, but unmatched swimmers beneath them. Much of their story happens too fast or too far out of sight to notice. But high-speed video and still photography slow the action, revealing the elegance hidden in every wind beat. Underwater cameras and a little creative disguise let us follow puffins into the depths of their world. We're Russ and Tim Lehman, wildlife filmmakers and photographers, on assignment for the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. And this is Wild Birds Revealed. OM System offers birders and nature photographers lightweight, weather-sealed gear with strong image stabilization and powerful super telephoto lenses. All built for handheld freedom to capture amazing moments. Wow, we got a beautiful morning here up on the coast of Maine. We're heading out by boat to one of the puffin nesting islands to hopefully get some shots of them out there. In this episode, we're trying to reveal what makes puffins so extraordinary. Their short, stubby wings. They must do double duty, lifting them into the air and then propelling them through the sea. In the air, puffins have barely enough wing area to stay aloft. That's why they have to flap so fast. Puffins beat their wings up to 400 times a minute and fly basically in a straight line. One of the behaviors I want to capture with the puffins is the takeoff from the water because they're not very powerful flyers in the air, so they have to run along the surface and flap their wings against the water. So there's spray flying, and I know it's going to create a dramatic photo. This is where the still camera reveals what the eye can't. When you stop the action, you can see just how hard the puffins' wings are working to get their heavy bodies airborne. When they land, they sometimes face plant into the water, unable to make a smooth landing. Compare a puffin's wing with an American herring bill. The puffin's wing is narrow and short. It provides a lot of power when used as a flipper underwater. But in thin air, that small wing area makes it hard to generate lift. By contrast, the American herring gull has longer, broader wings with wider tips. All that wing area lets it cruise and twist at will. But they're far too big to function in the water, so gulls can only fish from the surface. They can't dive like a puffin. We really want to try and film puffins underwater, and we have kind of a crazy idea of how we're gonna get close to them. So we've attached a stuffed animal puffin to this hood. So I'm gonna wear the puffin on my head and then hopefully as I swim through the water, it's gonna look like the puffin's floating on top of the water and hopefully it'll let me sneak up on the puffins. Maybe they'll even be curious and come check it out. This isn't the first time we tried to use a decoy. Last year, I attached a common eider head to a bike helmet to try and get close to puffins. And I really wasn't fooling anybody. But this year, as soon as I jumped in the water, the puffins swam right up, curious to check out the puffin on my head. And I was able to capture the moment we'd been after. Puffins flying underwater. Wings pumping, with wingtips sleeked back into sharp points.
their wings become flippers, slicing through the water with power and minimal drag. No longer clumsy flyers, down here they're hunters. Fast, graceful, and agile, able to turn, bank, and swoop at will. I love seeing them poke their heads underwater and scan for fish, then dive in pursuit, so much like a hawk hovering over a grassy field. Puffins primarily eat small fish, carrying their catch with the help of small spines on the roof of their mouths. With wings that can fly above and below the water, they are perfectly adapted for life on the coast. Thanks for tuning in to Wild Birds Revealed. Be sure to check out our other episodes on the Cornell Lab YouTube channel and the All About Birds website.